Imagine a world where the cities we know are underwater and what used to be the ocean is now a barren wasteland. This is a world where every bit of water and land have suddenly switched places. Cities like New York and Paris would find themselves underwater. Tsunamis would come rushing into the cities, destroying everything. And if you're on a boat, you'd find yourself falling down, down, down into a dry ocean bed. The Amazon rainforest would be flooded and ancient diseases would come back to life. Which species of animals and plants would fare the best? Is there any way humans could survive this? And what would our new Earth look like? This is What If, and here's what would happen if water and land suddenly switched places. One of the more unexpected changes we'd see in this scenario would be significant climate change. This would be because of changing weather patterns and changing ocean currents. And because this dramatic change is happening overnight, we won't have time to prepare for it. But what if we knew this massive switch was coming ahead of time? Would there be anything we could do to stop it? Well, to answer that, let's take a look at our own climate issues that we're dealing with here on Earth right now. Climate change is causing global sea levels to rise at an alarming rate, leaving some of the world's biggest cities like London and Bangkok facing significant threats within a few decades if we don't do anything to stop it. With this much advance notice, well, you'd think everyone would be taking action to prevent this grim future, but as we all know, that's not the case. Some people won't believe or care about climate change until they're faced with an extreme situation like the one we're talking about today. But many people do want to help and make a difference. They just don't know how. Well, I might have just the solution. Say hello to Solar Slice, the startup company making it easy for you to make a real difference in the fight against climate change. Solar Slice lets you directly fund large-scale solar farms. With their app, you can track your energy production and carbon savings and even earn rewards to further support other climate initiatives. Here's how it works. First, you sponsor a slice of their large-scale solar farm, adding 50 watts of clean energy to the grid and reducing harmful emissions. Then, you can use their app to track your impact with real-time data on your slice's energy production and carbon savings. You earn eco points as your slices generate clean energy, points you can use to buy more slices, plant more trees, or fund more meaningful initiatives. And if you want to expand your impact even further, you can share your progress with others, create group initiatives with friends, or send solar slices as eco-conscious gifts. To learn more, visit solarslice.com. You'll find a link to their Kickstarter campaign, which will help fund the construction of their first solar farm and development of their app. With the help of Solar Slice, we've got a chance to prevent a future where our cities are swallowed by rising seas. The people in our story, on the other hand, might not be so lucky. Okay, it's safe to say that water and land switching places would be the start of a new mass extinction. Your cities, towns, and any bit of dry land are now covered with water. Water now covers 21% of the globe and land covers the other 79%. That means we'll have new oceans. We've now got the North American Ocean, the South American Ocean, and the European, African, and Asian Oceans, all connected by narrow channels of water. And a new super large continent. In cities, people might have to run into skyscrapers to save themselves from drowning. They'll be looking outside, wondering when the waters are going to recede. Unfortunately, the answer is never. Because in our new world, water is here to stay on the old land. In this scenario, there would be two kinds of unlucky people. First, the ones who were outside on dry land and couldn't swim. They would have drowned immediately. The second group are the ones who lived far away from any kind of water, because now, They'd be surrounded by water with no ability to get to land, unless they had a boat stored somewhere. Maybe you'd be one of the lucky ones if you lived in a coastal city, say like New York, the Hudson River would now be bone dry. Maybe you'd grab a tire inner tube and put on your swimsuit and a backpack and swim out to the dry riverbed. Now, what about the animals? Well, unfortunately, marine life would be toast. 
or soggy toast. If all the water suddenly disappeared from lakes, and rivers, and oceans, fish would be left gasping for air and would die almost instantly. Riverbeds and dried up oceans would be piled up with the carcasses of dead marine animals. No more whales, sharks, or any kind of fish. Say goodbye to sushi. Now, on the bright side, looking at this new world of ocean floors might be a fascinating experience. After all, maps of oceans here on Earth are less detailed than maps we've made of Mars. Scientists find 2,300 new ocean species every year. If we didn't have the water to stop us, we'd find hundreds of thousands of new species. Unfortunately, they'd all be dead. And animals in forests might have it even worse. Instead of a swift death, they might be left to suffer. Big cats like tigers and lions forced to climb up into trees. They might find themselves sharing the canopy with apes. Other animals like zebras and giraffes would be carried away by the current and drown. So, some of our land animals would survive and others would go extinct. But regardless of who makes it out alive, ecosystems would be savagely altered. But there are two species that would do particularly well in this scenario. The first are reptiles. Crocodiles, turtles, alligators. They're used to living on both water and land. And as they generally hang out in water close to land, well, they won't have to crawl far to find a new habitat. It'll be right next door. The second group that'll do great is insects. 66 million years ago, when the Chicxulub impactor hit Earth and the planet was full of dead, decaying matter, insects had a feast. Count on a repeat of that scenario as insects jump on anything that's rotting. The bad news? Well, with swarms of mosquitoes, diseases like malaria are likely to break out among humans. Now, besides insects swarming everywhere, the other major problem in our new switched world? Well, there's no electricity. With power plants submerged in water, there'll be damage to electrical circuits that can't be repaired. Because the water's not going away, for the first time, you realize how dependent you are on energy. Heck, your 13th floor toilet won't flush anymore because water is pumped up to it using electricity. There's no television, and of course there's no internet. Many of the world's population would be gone from this catastrophe, but there is a lucky set of humans who survive this horror. They are the 40% of the world's population who live in coastal cities, or they might live next to a lake, which is now an island. They've somehow lived through the initial tsunami. Their land is now water, but they can make their way to safety. On the California coast, they scramble onto the new shore of Pacifica, the old Pacific Ocean. From New York, they doggy paddle to Atlantica, the old Atlantic Ocean. To get the world back to normal, everything will have to be built from the ground up. Homes, agriculture, transportation, the list is endless and challenging. Building any kind of new home will be hard without materials like wood or cement. But there is one thing we could use. Trash. Yeah, it's estimated that there are over 5 trillion pieces of trash in our oceans. Once the water leaves the oceans, humans could get resourceful and use the leftover garbage to make structures to live in. Kind of gross, yeah, I know, but at least it's been washed. Most land plants now will be submerged in water and will die, which means no access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Without vitamin C, scurvy, the disease sailors used to get, will increase. What is available is huge amounts of fish that have just died. Now, smart foodies will get to work. They dry and salt the fish to preserve it for the future. Pickling will be the new trend. Access to fresh water will be very limited. The humans who survive will be in for a punishing time. Now, in the medium term, the big challenge for humans will come from a shift in our climate. Our vast oceans play a key role in moderating our temperature today. As they shrink to a quarter of the area they once were, Earth will get much, much hotter. Water absorbs a large amount of heat, but with the total water area reduced to 21% of Earth's surface, oceans won't absorb as much energy from the sun as they do today. 
There will also be less water to absorb carbon dioxide, with oceans absorbing less heat and with more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, Earth will get pretty toasty. Also, today's ocean currents are able to distribute the heat that they absorb to different parts of the world. In this new geography, the paths these currents are able to take will have bottlenecks that will prevent the smooth flow of water. Look how narrow the new Latin American channel is. Less water surface also means less water vapor and less rainfall. In this new world, prepare yourself for dry, desert-like conditions. Your best chance for survival will be to live near the coast. Expensive coastal real estate, that's one thing that remains the same. Now, let's say an enterprising group of humans somehow survives this catastrophe. How will life evolve? Well, humans will become insect and reptile eaters, connoisseurs of pickled fish. But that'll be a tricky balance because with many of our previous weapons now lost underwater, hunting crocodiles won't be easy. And if humans wipe out the reptile population, that eliminates an important food source. Unfortunately, slower moving turtles will probably be quickly hunted into extinction. Reptiles that can retreat further into the new oceans, far away from humans, will have a better chance at survival. In general, smaller members of any surviving species will do better as they can get by with less food. Over millions of years, they'll evolve and as Earth's food sources get re-established, the species will become bigger again. Birds are also likely to survive, though with trees gone, nesting becomes a challenge. Maybe they'll build nests in the top floors of old skyscrapers. And don't forget, with the destruction of ocean plankton and all of our land-based plant life, over time, oxygen will settle at a new lower level equilibrium. Unless plants begin to grow again on both land and in water, this lower level of oxygen will cause all species to evolve in new ways. Mammals may have bigger red blood cells, bigger lungs, or smaller bodies to use their oxygen more efficiently. And insect sizes will decrease over time as less oxygen will be available to them. Now, of course, the big question is, will humans survive such a catastrophic event? Well, it's hard to say, but if we look back in time, human populations have rebounded from numbers as small as a few thousand, so yeah, it's possible. If humans do survive, we'll emerge stronger and hardier than ever before. We'll build a new civilization on what's now become a hot brown marble. Hey, who knows, maybe even one day we'll become an advanced level seven civilization. But that sounds like a story for another What If.